the Director of Research and Head Microbiology Department, Nigeria Institute of Medical Research, Naima Lagos, joins us now. Professor Rosemary Aldu, thank you for joining us on the program. My pleasure. Let's first ask, do you agree with involving community pharmacists to sort of expand the vaccination exercise? Well, I think it's a good idea. It's been used in some countries of the world, but that may not be our challenge right now. Currently, we don't even have enough doses of this vaccine. We have only covered about 0.7% of our population that have been fully vaccinated. So we need more vaccines as at now. So it's not the points for delivery. We don't even have enough. So I think we should focus on that. And uh, uh, if for as long as we continue to depend on donors, we will keep have, we, will not, we may not have enough. Okay, so we also need to strengthen local production, which I also know that, um, for instance, in my institution, Nigeria Institute of Medical Research, we are conducting some studies in the development of vaccines, though still at the preclinical phase, okay? But the uh, Central Bank of Nigeria has some funds, intervention funds, to support production of vaccines, you know, I mean, development of vaccines. And uh, so if, if one has an idea that can result in the translation of a product, they'll get funding for that. So you're saying and there's access for research for vaccines? Yes, there is. I mean, there's some funds that have been released for this. Aside from that of the CBN, I know that in my institution we just got some intervention funds. And um, last year, during the restrictions and movement, we had some private sector organization supporting us. I do know that uh, the, uh, the kit that was developed in my institution, a PCR-based kit, was supported by uh, a, a philanthropic organization. So I think that uh, in as much as... Um, I, I don't think the government can do it all. If we have others also join hands, I'm sure we will make a, a, a huge step in that direction. So let's look at the vaccines. We have the Moderna, which hasn't been rolled out yet, and we're expecting Johnson & Johnson. Break down the efficacy of these two vaccines. Well, um, in talking about efficacy of vaccines, generally all the vaccines are effective. And looking at the figures that have been quoted in literature, it's not good to compare directly. Okay, because sometimes what the time points they are measuring may not be the same. However, all the vaccines that have been approved by WHO are effective. Um, in as much as uh, Moderna has, it, it's just that the method of delivery of uh, the technology that has been used in the production is slightly different. While the Moderna is the messenger RNA vaccine, the uh, Johnson & Johnson is a viral vector. Okay, the only issue with the Moderna is that it requires cold storage. And we are aware they also got some... Uh, the government has also got some cold facilities. But the Johnson & Johnson and the AstraZeneca that we have used in the past, the, the uh, plus four... Uh, that is the refrigeration temperature is just good enough. So looking at all of this, all the vaccines that are available are effective. And I think anyone that one has access to, you should go for it. If you have different options to choose from, I think you're just lucky. All right. We still have Professor Aldo in the studio with us. We'll go on a quick break. When we return, we'll also talk about the virus trends in Ireland and other parts of the world. Stay with us. Welcome back. And we've been talking with the Director of Research and Head Microbiology Department at NIMA, Professor Rosemary Ardu. Thank you for your patience. Uh, still talking vaccines and vaccination. Um, the Moderna like the AstraZeneca is two doses, but we hear the Johnson & Johnson is just a single dose. Um, why should perhaps in terms of people who want to choose if they have a choice. I mean, we don't have so much vaccine, so, you know, spoiling, being spoiled for choice is, a, is another thing. But then, you know, why the difference? And, you know, why would one person decide to take Johnson and Johnson and, and perhaps not the Moderna? Well, um, the Moderna is two doses, just like you have said, and that is what the manufacturers recommend. And 
That is what has been approved. While the Johnson & Johnson is one dose, in as much as it's one dose, I do know that um, research is going on by the manufacturers to consider a second dose. Maybe it will even improve its efficacy. So I think that um, if it's just one dose and we can give more people, that would be fine because um, half bread is better than none if we have one. And, uh, but all of these things is still the donors that are still providing it. But um, it doesn't really make much difference. The important thing is that the individuals that get these vaccines are protected to a great extent. Let's talk about the major, if there are any, major severe side effects to the vaccines. We know at the beginning, AstraZeneca, there was the blood clot for um, the zero point something percentage. But for these other vaccines, have you heard of any? Well, um, these vaccines have side effects, just like any other vaccine. It's not unique for the COVID-19 vaccines. I do know that even children, when we're taking our children for immunization, they will ask that we give them paracetamol when we get home, you know, so that if there's any fever, it will subside. So it is not peculiar to COVID-19. There are some side effects. For major side effects that have been reported, really, really very uh, rare. They are really very rare. And uh, if you are to weigh, some of them include swelling arm, you know, and some allergies and blood clotting, just like you have mentioned. But if the issue is just weighing the risk and the benefits, the risk of these side effects and the benefits of the vaccine, the risk is much uh, lower than the benefits. There's more benefits from taking these vaccines because of certainly it will reduce severe symptoms if one gets infected. I mean, gets uh, infected, and then the rate of hospitalization and death also reduces. So I think there is more benefit in taking these vaccines than the risk. But even at that, those that are vac delivering these vaccines also have been trained on how to manage these things if they do occur. Right. And uh, of course, even at the vaccination centers, they'll ask that you wait some minutes, 15 minutes or thereabout, for some observation before you're let to go. So it's still safe taking these vaccines. All right, we appreciate your time. Thank you so much for joining us on the program. Director Research Head, Head Microbiology Department with NIMA. Thank you for joining us. My pleasure. Thank you.